one thing that we haven't discussed yet is you know, how to optimize a schedule once you've defined the, the sequence. So it looks like we've defined our crew flow. We're satisfied with the crew flow. We're satisfied with the order of completion. We don't have that, that fourth floor podium coming in before the adjacent steel uh, on the tower. So let's go in uh, back into our scheduling environment and take a look at how we might further optimize uh, the schedule. All right, so back into our steel erection view. There's not much to optimize here. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. Um, let's take a look now at the, the resources, though, that are required uh, to install this steel. I'll create a view that shows the flow line on top and our resource graph on the bottom. So this is the, the resource graph uh, that uh, comes along uh, with the activities that are active in our steel erection. The green is structural steel labor, and the, uh, the purple is metal decking labor. So we've got a pretty consistent um, nine, uh, nine men for that erect steel. So that's this, this main horizontal band here up at nine men. And of course, that's, that's obvious because we have nine men assigned to our steel erection activity. Um, these little uh, peaks are relative to the shakeout and wind tack activity, uh, showing one man for supplemental welding uh, of that deck and another man uh, from the decking sub uh, of, the, of the layout of that decking. So um, you know, there's, uh, there's not a lot we, we should do. Uh, with these resources. Obviously, the steel erection is going to be driving uh, the production here. So let's actually go over and take a look at what our resource graph for the slab on deck looks like. So I've activated the, uh, the flow line view in the top. And at the bottom, we have our resource graph. Now, each color is a uh, is a resource group or a subcontractor. And you know what you can see here is that uh, during the, the early days of uh, the metal uh, the welding of the metal decking, the shear studs and edge form, we've got eight guys total down here. Um, that is some um, structural steel guy and, and metal decking. Then right when the layout and the, uh, the insert activities uh, kick off in the flow line view here, we spike up to 32, 33 men um, uh, on, on any, in each location. And again, each color represents a trade. So let's take, a, let's take a look at how each of those trades look individually. Let's say we just want to look at the metal decking labor. Pretty balanced. Um, I, I'd say it's fair. We have uh, for like a one, you know, half a day or something. This one guy here, based on, on on the schedule, but it's a pretty even four men tapering down to three men in the last month for the for decking activities. So let's take a look at our mechanical labor. And again, this, uh, this will be related to the layout and the installation of the inserts on the slab on deck. All right, pretty consistent. Um, got one man down here, got three up here, tapering down to two at the end. The gray bars are holidays, um, so what, what appear as gaps uh, are simply days off. Continue looking, let's check out our plumbing. Now plumbing, in this case, has a couple of peaks and valleys. You can see that we've got one man jumping up to three, but then we've got this demobilization and mobilization, these little valley gaps here, uh, which is the white space, 
which is um, the, what the program is telling us is a is a DMOB and a MOB uh, at these locations. And of course, this is um, evident by the fact that we have breaks in our flow line for these trades. Basically, what this is representing is an as soon as possible uh, plan for this activity. And um, you know, if, if the the, the MOBs and the DMOBs in this case are pretty minimal, uh, but um, you know, you want to obviously eliminate as many of the peaks and valleys as possible during the optimization process, uh, which of course can be done um, by making trades uh, continuous, um, so that we have uh, fewer starts and stops. And uh, you know, if you have any concerns about resource allocation, maybe reducing the total man hours. Let's take a look at our concrete because that's where we're going to have the most uh, men on the back side. Actually, concrete and rebar. All right, so here's our concrete uh, and reinforcing. Now, um, what this is telling us is that we have nine men on the concrete and four men on the reinforcing. And the reinforcing is actually, um, is actually consistent. So we have that same four men moving all the way across. That's the purple bar here. Uh, the, uh, one of the issues that I see, however, is that this, this black line here uh, indicating the end of the project, uh, we're exceeding that right now, or the end of this phase, we're exceeding that with this concrete place and finish. We're, we're going to want to um, uh, drag these activities up and, and make sure that we can actually uh, man up on the, on the project enough to complete before the deadline. And again, to do that, uh, let's just drag some men. Let's say we've had a discussion with the reinforcing contractor. Uh, we want to add some resources and bump that up to five. You can see how the resource graph has changed down here at the bottom, five men in the purple. And in order to complete concrete ahead of time, we need to man up on that as well. Excellent. Okay. So what, what, what we're left with here is a plan that shows uh, continuous work for critical activities like reinforcing and welding. The layout of the inserts is broken and discontinuous. Um, but if we wanted to make that layout activity continuous, we could by forcing it to be paced. Now, uh, if you notice what happened, I simply paste the installation of the electrical inserts. That's this purple line here, which had a negative impact on the overall duration of this phase um, by not starting uh, or by, by delaying the start so that the work could be continuous. We pushed these back to activities uh, beyond the project end date. So that actually wasn't a good decision for optimization. However badly we want this activity to be uh, uh, to be continuous, it's not a good decision for the project on a whole because it's going to push that completion of the slab on metal deck uh, uh, over a month beyond the, the milestone, which of course is going to impact all the interior trades. So in this case, let's set that back to as soon as possible. It's going to bring it back in and uh, let's call this optimized and call it good. <clears throat> 